Will Sammy Callahan and John Moxie finally reunite? Moose's last match could be at Against All Odds. Tommy Dreamer says more New Japan Pro Wrestling stars are on the way to Impact Wrestling. And Josh Alexander's victory over El Fantasmo is a lot more important than you may think. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge, the number one source on YouTube for the Impact Wrestling fan. If you're an Impact Wrestling fan and you're watching us here on the Impact Lounge right here on YouTube and you don't subscribe, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Again, the Impact Lounge is the number one source on YouTube for the Impact Wrestling fan. Okay, let's get into it. Will we finally see Sammy Callahan and John Moxley reunite the Switchblade conspiracy in their battle against the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega? Sammy Callahan attacked by the Good Brothers at Under Siege, uh, causing him to lose the number one contenders match, which was ultimately ultimately won by Moose. Uh, but it's very interesting on AEW Dynamite, John Moxley is feuding with the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega. Uh, Sammy Callahan feuding with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers on Impact Wrestling. It, it only seems logical that Sammy Callahan and John Moxley reunite the Switchblade conspiracy. Even on Twitter, Sammy Callahan tweeted out a um, a GIF of a or GIF GIF whatever it's called of a Switchblade. So yeah, one has to think that that's a reference to the switchblade uh, conspiracy which is what they were called in ccw back in 2009 2000 to 2011 uh, so you have to wonder are they finally going to reunite I, I really hope they do reunite i hope we see sammy callahan showing up on aew it's about time we see another impact wrestling star showing up in aew and sammy callahan is the perfect perfect person to do that perfect talent to do that I could see him showing up on this. I, I would be surprised, actually, if he didn't show up on this week's edition of AEW Dynamite. I'd be very, very surprised if he didn't show up and uh, help John Moxley in some way, shape, or form. And Moxley being attacked by the Good Brothers. Sammy Callahan shows up. Lights go out. They go on. Callahan's in the ring. And uh, him and Moxley reunite, and they take out the Good Brothers. Kenny and Mike. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I really hope this in the works. I really, really hope it's in the works because Sammy Callahan needs some help, and um, especially in Impact Wrestling. Uh, I would love to see Moxie showing up at Impact Wrestling as well. I'd love to see some more cross-promoting uh, between the talent, not just Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Let's get some more uh, more talent involved. I just, I just hope... <laughs> I just hope that um, when Sammy Callahan does look for someone to help him, it, that 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 Ken Shamrock doesn't show up because I I'd be very disappointed. I'd be very disappointed if it's Ken Shamrock. But let's not talk about Ken Shamrock. I'm really got my fingers crossed. Um, and again, it would be it would just be the logical a logical situation for Sammy Callahan and John Moxley to finally reunite and battle the Good Brothers and um, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks involved as well. Because right now, um, John Moxley, uh, he needs uh, he needs some um, reinforcements and Sammy Callahan would be absolutely fantastic um, in their war with the Good Brothers and, and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I really hope, I really hope you see Sammy Callahan showing up. I mean, He's he's definitely the guy. He's definitely definitely the guy. And I know the I know Moose. Well, we're going to talk about Moose in a second, but I know Moose is is he's the next uh, next in line uh, for Kenny Omega. What am I seeing him showing up in AEW Dynamite? Uh, but but I, I I don't think that we're going to see too many. I I think Moose is going to Moose and Kenny Omega. I think their feud is going to just um, strictly be Impact Wrestling. But I, you know, Sammy Callahan is. Um, is, is a wild card. Uh, he's a loose cannon, and uh, he's the type of guy that would show up, show up at, at AEW Dynamite and um, go after the Good Brothers. And it again, it just makes complete sense. It just makes complete sense that uh, Sammy Callahan shows up and uh, they uh, he reunites uh, with Sean Moxley. The Switchblade conspiracy. I think it would be. I would be just just fantastic. Just please, just. 
let's not <laughs> just for the for this few. Let's not bring back Ken Shamrock because uh, I wouldn't I I wouldn't be that excited um, if uh, you know Sammy Callahan, John Moxley against the Good Brothers sounds a lot better than Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock against the Good Brothers. You know, in my opinion, but uh, I'm sure Sammy Callahan. Um, would uh would get a shot at the title, um, whoever the champion may be, uh, eventually gonna get a shot at the title. But, but please, Tony Khan, Scott Demore, just get together, work something out. You know, I again, I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Sammy Callahan showed up on this week's episode of AEW Dynamite. I think I think it would be fantastic. I, I I think he's the next the next Impact talent to show up and. We'll see. Keep my fingers crossed for that one. Okay, so Moose. I talked about Moose. Moose's last match for Impact Wrestling may very well be June 12th because his contract is up in June, and he won the number one contenders match at Under Siege, and um, he gets the title shot at Against All Odds on June 12th against Kenny Omega. And I kind of think that if there was any chant on signing Moose, that the main event at Slammiversary would have been Kenny Omega versus Moose for the uh, Impact Wrestling uh, um, world title because that's the biggest match that they have right now and they're giving it basically away on Impact Plus. They're kind of rushing it a little bit in my opinion and I, I guess rightfully so because his contract is coming up in June and I, I don't know if they're going to be able to sign him or not. I'm thinking if they do happen to sign Moose, there'll be some shenanigans in this match and there'll be a, a no contest and then they'll have Another match at Slammiversary, which Moose would get the title back. But I have a feeling that this could be as this is could very well be Moose's last match in Impact Wrestling. Nothing's been announced yet. I know they just signed Jordan Grace to another a, a contract extension, which was great. Very happy for that. But um, I don't know. Moose has got himself in fantastic shape. I, I think Moose might be moving on. I hope not, but I, I have a feeling. That Moose will be moving on again. I I really hope not. It's going to be really tough, tough to replace Moose, and that's one guy that they have to sign. And I'm surprised they haven't signed him yet because we're what? Uh, what's today's date? Today's December, we're like 13 days away, 13, 14 days away from June, and who knows when his contract is up? Could be at the end of June. Uh, it's definitely going to be. It's definitely after June 12th. Otherwise, this match wouldn't be taking place unless he's working um, without uh, as work. He's working without a contract, but I don't think uh, I don't think he would work without a contract. I mean, what would be the point? I mean, especially if he's going to lose. Um, like, it's not like he's the champion and he has to drop the title, uh, so he's going to work um, a day or two after his contract expires. So I don't think his contract expires till after June twelfth. But um, could very well be the last time we uh, see Moose. And uh, as I said, I, I on past podcasts, he's one guy that they absolutely have to sign. And I'm a little disappointed that they haven't signed him yet. I'm sure they made him an offer. And um, I'm disappointed that uh, he hasn't been re-signed yet because he was, should have been a top priority since day one. He should have been a top priority. Let's re-sign Moose. But... Um, doesn't look good in my opinion. It doesn't look good. I could be wrong. I could be way off base, and I hope I am. I hope there's some sort of announcement that they make that Moose has re-signed a three-year deal with Impact Wrestling because he is the top star, in my opinion, right now in Impact. And if and when he leaves, he's going to be very, 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 very difficult to replace. Very difficult to replace. I can't think of anybody out there that... Um, that uh, that they could sign that will replace Moose, and uh, where where Moose goes, who knows? It could be AEW, it could be it could be um, WWE, of course. Um, but uh, hopefully, it's right back in Impact Wrestling. Uh, hopefully, and and I I don't th like I said, if he doesn't sign, they don't resign him. He's going to lose on June twelfth, hands down. He's not going to defeat uh, Kenny Omega um, on Impact Plus. I think Kenny Omega is going to lose the title at Slammiversary. But uh, but if he does sign a contract, like I said, there might there's going to be some shenanigans in this match. It'll end in a no contest, and then we'll have like a or someone will get involved, and we'll have like a steel cage match or something at um, at Slammiversary between Moose and and Kenny Omega if he resigns. And I hope he does. I hope they resign Moose. And um, it just it, it gets me a little down thinking that this could be his last match at Impact Wrestling, and hopefully it's not. Hopefully they are able to resign Moose. For another three years, um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on it. Keep our eyes on it. Keep our fingers crossed. And 
again, don't want to lose Moose. Don't want to lose Moose, man. All right, so Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer says more New Japan Pro Wrestling stars are coming to Impact Wrestling. I know Slammiversary is coming July 17th. Uh, there's the whole Our World is Going to Change Again, where they show the Slammiversary promo package, uh, promo video. Uh, they showed, uh, I think, Kazichika Okada, Sanada, and Tetsuya Naito uh, teasing that they're coming. I don't think those guys are coming to Impact Wrestling. I'm sorry, those are top, top guys. In New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I don't think we're going to see um, Okada, Naito, or Sonata in Impact Wrestling. I, I'm thinking we're going to see Tamatanga Tangaloa because uh, I know they have a, uh, a um, little Twitter feud going on with the Good Brothers right now and, and the Bullet Club. Uh, I think we might see them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Taji Ishimori uh, shows up. Um, Taji Ishimori now with the Bullet Club. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, he actually teamed with El Fantasmo and they won the end, end of, um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, so him coming in possibly to team with El Fantasmo to create another tag team in Impact Wrestling could be a, a possibility. <clears throat> I would love to see a Minoru Suzuki is a possibility as well. I can see the Minoru Suzuki uh, possibly coming in. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii uh, would be um, would be a uh, a top star. Um, that I would love to see an Impact Wrestling. Uh, you have Kota Ibushi, but I don't I I don't know if Kota Ibushi Kota Ibushi again top star. We could see Jay White, Switchblade Jay White is a possibility as well. Uh, he's the current leader of the Bullet Club um, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities there. So it's uh, curious to see who who is going to be coming uh, to Impact Wrestling. And I also would like to see some Impact Wrestling stars. When when the COVID, when this whole COVID pandemic um, eases, down, eases up and it's starting to come to an end, I would like to see some Impact Wrestling stars head on over to New Japan Pro Wrestling as well. Even on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, I mean, even send some Impact Wrestlers there. And speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, I I, I wouldn't mind seeing like like um, Renderita, who is on excursion right now in the U.S. Renderita, an extremely extremely talented wrestler, would fit in perfectly with the X Division. Uh, Clark Connors, Young Lion, would be absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic in in um, Impact Wrestling. Uh, Carl Fredericks. Carl Fredericks, he's no longer a young lion. Uh, he's um, a mainstay in New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong. He would be terrific in Impact Wrestling as well. So there are, there is talent in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling talent in the States that they could put on um, Impact Wrestling. So there's a lot of possibilities. Again, would love to see Ren Narita. Ren Narita is one of the top young stars in professional wrestling today, in my opinion. And I would love to see him against Josh Alexander for the X Division title. Clark Connors coming in. I would love to see him against Chris Bay. So there's a lot of possibilities there. They should really get on the horn and, <laughs> and get some of these guys in to uh to impact wrestling because I think they would be um I think they would be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic in impact wrestling. Uh, speaking of which uh, I forgot what website it was, but they just released. Um, it might have been Fightful, my Fightful dot com, or or Wrestling Inc. or um, or Wrestle Talk. I, wanna, I can't remember the website, but uh, they they released uh, the top seventy five unsigned indie stars right now in professional wrestling. And there was a lot of great talent on there. A lot of really, really good talent. I don't have the list in front of me, so I can't read off the names. But there are there are a lot of really good talent on that list of 75 unsigned indie talent, the best, the top 75 unsigned indie talent in professional wrestling right now, Scott Demore should get that freaking list, go down the list, pick five or six talent, talented wrestlers off that list and bring them into Impact Wrestling and um, mold them as the future of Impact Wrestling. It's not that difficult. Just go through the list. There's, a, there's that list there. Just go through the list. Pick a couple of wrestlers off the list that you think have a shot at being um, stars in Impact Wrestling that you can mold into the future of Impact Wrestling because there's a lot of big names on there, a lot of good names, a lot of good, talented wrestlers on there, and he should really go through that list. And um, I, mean, I mean, Lee Moriarty was on the list, Trey Lamar, AJ Gray was on the list, Bill Collier, I believe, was on the list. Um, other names um, escape me right now, but I wish I had the list in front of me because there were a lot of good names. But Impact... Impact Wrestling, Scott Demore should be going through that list and bringing in some top young talent that they can mold for the future uh, for Impact Wrestling. 
Um, I know I go on a uh, tangent about bringing young talent, but that's what they should do. That's what Scott Demore should do. All right. And speaking of Impact Wrestling, speaking of Scott Demore as the executive vice president, uh, rumor going around that Don Callis um, no longer um, the executive, an executive vice president at Impact Wrestling. His um, his um, his title, I think his his profile was taken off Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling website. Uh, so rumors going around that he might be done with Impact Wrestling. He might be going to AEW full time. Just a rumor right now. Nothing's been confirmed, so I'm not really going to go into it. Uh, so I, I can't speculate, but uh, could be part of a storyline that they might be working on. Um, he could be. He could be done with Impact Wrestling. Who knows? Maybe his contract is winding down, and he wants to. Um, maybe the job is too stressful for him. I don't know. Again, just me speculating. So I don't want to go into it too much. Uh, just a rumor that um, that uh, he might be done with Impact Wrestling. And uh, working for AEW full time as Kenny Omega and um, the Young Bucks manager. Uh, so who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I'm sure. Um, well, I'm sure more details will come out in the uh, next couple of days, and um, we'll just report on what comes out. Right? Again, can't speculate. Just a rumor right now. So I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, but um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, so Josh Alexander at Under Siege. First off, actually, Under Siege, I want to congratulate uh, Kara Hogan, Tasha Steeles, Fire and Flavor for regaining the Knockouts Tag Team Championship. Uh, the titles are back where they belong, around the waist against, uh, around the waist of the best tag team in uh, the best women's tag team in Impact Wrestling, and one of the best reasons to watch Impact Wrestling right now, Fire and Flavor. No one deserves the title more than them. I hope they hold on to the title for quite some time, uh, at least until hopefully the Iconics come into Impact Wrestling and Fire and Flavor and the Iconics feud over the Impact Wrestling Knockouts tag team titles. I think it, that would be a great feud, uh, but for that to happen, the Iconics need to sign with Impact Wrestling and we won't know until uh, after July 14th, so I'll keep my fingers crossed for that. Uh, but it was the right move. They deserve the title again. Uh, I know Rachel Elring made her debut with Impact Wrestling. She had to get off to a hot start, so they put the belt on her and Jordan Grace. But uh, the belts are back where they belong, around the waists of Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Josh Alexander defeated El Fantasmo. Uh, retain the exhibition championship and this was an extremely important win for not just josh alexander but for impact wrestling if el fantasmo had defeated josh alexander uh, for the exhibition title what would that have said about impact wrestling talent that wrestlers could come in from any promotion and their their mid carters could come in from any promotion and win titles from the top stars in Impact Wrestling will really make Impact Wrestling look really weak. Look at Finn Juice. They're the um, Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Well, Kenny Omega's at a mid-carder, but he's worked for AEW. He's the Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, he came in, defeated. Um, uh, he won the, uh, the Impact Wrestling World title. Uh, against Rich Swan, um, and if El Fantasmo came in in his like third match and defeated Josh Alexander uh, for the X Division Championship, that really would have made Impact Wrestling look very, very weak. So it was very, very it was vitally important that Josh Alexander retain the X Division Championship, and I'm so glad he did. It was a tremendous match against El Fantasmo. I absolutely loved it, and I absolutely love that Josh Alexander successfully defended the title against. El Fantasmo. It's exactly what needed to be done to show that, hey, Impact Wrestling has top stars too, and we're beating guys from New Japan Pro Wrestling. We're beating guys from other promotions. So it's very, very important that Josh Alexander retain that title. And I, I would have I would have really been a, a little upset if um if El Fantasmo had won the exhibition title, but thankfully my man, one of the best wrestlers in the world today, in my opinion, Josh Alexander, retained the X Division title. And um glad he did. Again, it was so important that he defeated El Fantasma. He made Fantasma tap out. It was very, very important. And I'm glad that's how it went down. Last but not least, I want to talk about the WWE for a second. Because people are, are out knocking Impact Wrestling, saying uh, why are they still in business. Um, there's nobody knows who who these wrestlers are. Nobody has no talent. All the talent's leaving. Let's talk about the WWE backlash. Damian Priest 
and The Miz. They had a lumberjack match, but the match was not <laughs> surrounded by lumberjacks, wrestlers, to prevent them from leaving. The match was surrounded by, by zombies. <laughs> the match was surrounded by zombies. And... Uh, it was a cross, they were cross promoting, you know, Batista's new movie, uh, Army of the Dead. I think it's called Army of Darkness. I, I, I think it's Army of the Dead, actually, whatever it's called. But they were co promoting, they were promoting that movie by bringing in zombies to surround the ring. So, so Damian Priest and The Miz, uh, in the match, they had to fight each other and they had to fight off zombies. At one point, they, 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 um, they joined forces to fight off the zombies. And eventually, Damian Priest defeated The Miz, and a bunch of zombies crawled into the ring and <laughs> and ate The Miz. So the, the Miz has been killed by a bunch of zombies. So, so this is like the most ridiculous thing I think that that the that the WWE has done in a very very long time. The most ridiculous thing. Uh, that they've done in a long time. And yes, you could say, oh, it brought a lot of publicity. But Lewis, but Lewis, it brought a lot of publicity. People are talking about, people are talking negatively about it. People are talking negatively about it. Chris Jericho said that this match set professional wrestling back 30 years. Somebody tweeted at Batista saying, Batista, what are you doing? You should be ashamed of yourself. And Batista even was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, they're, they're, they're promoting my movie, but hey, I had nothing to do with this, right? If you want to tweet at somebody, tweet at Vince McMahon. This is, he's like, what the, he's like, WTF, WTF, I had nothing to do with this. I'm on a plane, I didn't book this. I didn't book this crap. You know, contact Vince McMahon, complain to him. <laughs> now, Batista, who, the movie that they were promoting, he, he wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted nothing to do with it. And But, but, but Impact Wrestling's on his last legs, guys. But Impact Wrestling's on its last legs, and uh, they have they don't have any talent anymore. And and who's this and who's that? And and their matches are garbage. And and um, they're another nail in the coffin for Impact Wrestling, right? But uh, but um, but zombies ate the Miz. So so is that is is the Miz gone? Is the Miz dead? Is he gone from? How is he going to come? Is, is the Miz going to come back as a zombie? Is is that his going to be his new persona? It's going to be the the zombie Miz is going to come and. And try to eat other Impact Wrestling. I'm sorry, eat, eat other WWE stars. Is is that what's going to go on? How do they bring the Miz back now? The Miz was devoured. By, <laughs> the Miz was devoured by zombies. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing. The most ridiculous, ridiculous thing. Yeah, I saw clips of it. It was just so stupid. And and I agree with Chris Jericho when he said that this brought professional wrestling back. This put it back 30 years. So. Great job, WWE. Great job. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.